Welcome to the video. Well done for making that choice to grab this free content. I've got to tell you that this is just over an hour of footage teaching you these mind tricks, almost like Jedi mind skills. That's what it looks like to the people you'll amaze with these uh, techniques. But it actually comes from a seminar I did that makes a 12 DVD set. Now this is currently on sale on some of my websites on the internet for just short of $200 for that particular event alone. But let me tell you now, even if you're really impressed, as I'm sure you will be, by the skills you're about to learn in this sample video, don't go searching for it, don't go buying it, I don't want you to spend money, I don't want you to go searching out my websites and buying products. Whatever you do, don't do that, just enjoy and watch the video. Is this uh, a, 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 a one week, seven days, or two week, 14 days, three weeks, how many days is this holiday? We'll see. Two. Uh, we're in Spain, so I think this one's not too much to do with predicting anything, but did you go on the beach? Yes. You have to throw it easy on it somewhere along the line. Relaxing more, that's wonderful. I want you to now, burning it in red in your mind, burning it in red, this memory, I want you to think of, yes. Um, I'm thinking, uh, uh, beach, beach, near water, I'm thinking there's uh, an, uh, an activity to do with water. Could have been swimming, but was there anything else? Water skiing. Okay, I want you now to see clearly in your mind, turning that volume up in your mind so I can get that vibe coming through to me. I want you to imagine it's the last night of your holiday. Yeah, we'll go with the last night. Um, I want you to imagine, what did you have for your tea? You don't know? Okay. That's cool. Sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. Um, okay, you don't know what you had, but I still reckon it was that, I'm sure of that after, I don't know. Um, where did you have your tea? Alright, you know, the image is fading, that's fine, don't worry. We'll have to try one more thing, then we'll try one more thing. Um, one more thing, what can we do here? Okay, something you would remember. Something you would remember. Was. I'm just getting a feeling here, but was there anything. Um, unusual or particularly memorable about your trip there on the way home? On the way home. On the way home. Okay. I want you to visualize that clearly in your mind, okay? Whatever it was, whether it was, you know, the plane being late or whatever, I want you to visualize it, see it clear and big, burning your mind in red, that is wonderful. It's turn the volume up, that's good. I feel like coming there and... Oh, right, okay. Well, if it's that, that is quite unusual. If we're right here, don't, you know, just give us one word answers again, but, um... Did you... Does this particular memory involve a, a, a human being, a person? Yes. Okay. Would perhaps most people think of this person as being famous? Yes. Okay. Think of that person's name. Think of that person's name, get it clear in your mind. If we can manage to get this, um, when it comes to the coffee break at 12, everyone will tell you what's gone on because you will remember to forget. I forget to remember exactly what's took place. You should relax more. I know that's a nice memory, but I want you to visualize that name, clear in your mind. Okay. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> visualize the name. I'm not 100% certain, uh, you know, I'm not wonderful with spelling, but pick the first letter and get them out. Um, 
Who's this person? I'm just going to tap, tap you on the head when I do you come back to the room. You'll finally remember to forget and forget to remember everything that's just taken place. You'll feel really good as everyone gives you a round of applause and you go back to the audience. Wake you, wake you, round and shine. If you're burning, please know you round of applause. <laughs> what um, a certain several famous mind reader type people based their entire career on. The technique and method that I've just used. Which I think you'll agree is looks to an audience the closest thing to real mind reading that you're going to get. I didn't ask people to write things down in advance. That is as close as it gets. Um, but remember when you know people do this on TV, the first bit about selecting the memory isn't broadcast. <coughs> so you just see it from think about it and what have you. Now am I going to keep everyone in suspense until after the 12 o'clock break on how that was done? Or do you want to know now? <coughs> no. Do you want to know now? Yeah? Okay. You can, you can talk back to me. This is an interactive event. Right, you're going to fucking kick yourself. Okay. If I'd have left it till the break, which I'm not going to do, I will tell you now, but I'll, I just need to tell you something in advance. Come the break, had you spoke to Bernie, you would have got very confused. <coughs> but you would have put it down to the fact that she was hypnotised and couldn't remember properly what went on. So you'd be even more amazed. That'll become clearer in a minute. Right, how do we do this? Well. This is just an example, with a bit of common sense and thought, you can adapt this to be emotions, memories, people's memories, anything. Okay? That's where your own creativity comes in. But what you do first is you do your blue peas a bit, and um, you go and buy some colour card, cut them up into bits. Um, where's our um, memory card? Again, oh, so did I take it back off you? Right, okay. What you do is, we'll just put that one down there. More books. Then down there. There's no definite numbers required here. You could have a thick pad like that to make it look even more random. I'm still lazy, so I was having a can and was done, only wanted to do a, a few at the time. Um, so I wrote a few at random. Sex, work, birthday, anger, party. Things that could conjure up mental images. One word things. There's nothing else on the back. Simple as that. And the reason I've used different coloured card, I'll come to that in a minute. Because that's something the original doesn't tell you to do. I made this idiot proof. Um, and I don't mean that because you're idiots, but you know, I am generally, certainly first thing in the morning like this when I'm not at time. Um, so you write down some words. They can be whatever you want. You then take, for this example, three cards and write holiday on them. One red, one yellow, one green. This is what we're going to force on our volunteer. This is going to be, we know for a fact what word, what memory is going to be going into their head. And you're all thinking, fucking hell, though, it's still impressive how you get all that information. It would be if it wasn't for the fact that we've got another three cards, which, um, oddly enough, the same colours as the three with holiday brought on, but again, it could be anything, whichever you choose using this principle, and on the front of them they actually look like this. It says, you went on holiday to Spain when you were 16 years old. You went with your parents and best friend Kate. The holiday was 14 days long. You spent time at the beach and water skiing. On the last night you ate pizza at a pizza hut. You saw Robbie Williams at the airport on the way home. This is what actually ends up in the person's hand. This is what they're looking at. Create the mental image. Now you as the audience have seen these words. So as far as you're concerned, they've got one word. One word only. And what compounds that even more is, we have these set up in a certain way. So we have, for this example, you can adapt this, but you've got to remember the principle. Red, yellow, green are in, always things easy to remember. So I put them on the top of the cards, face down. On top of them, in that order, red, yellow, green, three of them that have got this wording on. Now, this wording's on the CD-ROM, you'll take away with you. As is all the stuff we'll be doing this morning, uh, over the weekend, that uses props, 
you can just put the CD-ROM in and print them out, and then stick to your own bits to click out of Save the word. Uh, and I've done it for different things as well. I've done like a romance one where you're on a date, and uh, you know, principles the same, whatever. So you put your red, yellow, green on top. These are your fullest cards. So you get your personal induction. At the end of the day, you tell them to close the fucking eyes and keep their eyes closed, unless I say otherwise. Keeping your eyes tightly closed at all times, unless I say otherwise. Not a fucking induction. Some people would argue it is. If they perceive it to be, then it is. But we're not going to talk about induction yet. That's going to be later on. So we'll pretend we've hypnotised them. It looks better than being a bit mindy. Plus, it works in better to your group sessions. The tremendous power of the human mind, what you can achieve, no that crap. If you've got the person apparently out of it, you give them this rubbish in a moment. I'm going to show you a memory card. And you're showing the audience casually. But you never mention the words. And the reason for not mentioning the words, the audience come to the conclusion that's because we don't want Bernie to have any clue in advance of what's going to happen. The reason we don't mention the words as we're showing the audience, really, is because we don't want Bernie to wonder why she's got a card like this, and not a card with one word on it. Okay? So the audience's reality is, I'm casually showing you quietly examples by saying, you know, I think you may all have had that. I hope that you've all had that. So you're taking it in, and you, as far as you're concerned, I've only shown a few, as far as you're concerned, you've no reason to think anything other than they've all got one word. You've no reason to think there's three at the back with a full script on. Maybe, right? Now, Bernie hasn't a clue what's going on here. Now, the audience themselves, the people in the room, are convinced. This is like, could be any word. And when it comes to it, we don't, we're not a magician. We're trying an experiment in enhancing your psychic or intuitive powers with hypnosis. So we don't need to do a fancy pick a card, any card. No, then it looks like a fucking trick. You just literally, cheaply, take the top three cards off, which are all false cards, right? And then you come back in the room, pick anyone you want. So she, everyone remembers afterwards, not that I just took three cards, they remember Bernie having had a free choice of memory, which your perception of the, as the audience is that it's a one word that's going to conjure up a memory. So as far as you're concerned, throughout this, somewhere into it, when we mention is it holiday, you probably all come to the conclusion, oh, she's thinking about a holiday. You're not thinking she's repeating a script that's on the card. Right? So Bernie takes one of these, and we'll say for the sake of speaking, it's the, we have the red, yellow, green ones. Say it's the green one. It doesn't matter. The point is, you don't, you keep it that way. You don't let, and you go, I don't want to see it. So you're making out to the audience, it's all so you don't know in advance. But you don't have to emphasise that too much, because at the end of the day, even if you did see it, what have you seen as far as the audience are concerned? One word, maybe, that said holiday. It certainly didn't tell you all that information that you picked up, but it does add a bit if you casually go, no, no, I don't want to see it, that's your private memory. The phrase, that's your private memory, gives the audience again the impression they're conjuring up their own memory that you couldn't know about. Because they think it's just words on there, so they're going to conjure up their own private memory. But the person sat here is thinking, oh yeah, I chose this car, so this is now my memory, this is what I've got to conjure up in my mind. So it's a nice way of telling them, read the script and remember it. And if you look at it, the key points are in red. Spain, 16 years old, parents, K, 14 days, beach, water skiing, Pisa, Pisa, Robbie Williams. So they stand out, they can be remembered pretty quick. People catch on when you say, burn it into your mind, clear in red. It sounds like you're saying burn it into your mind, doesn't it? But it's a nice way of saying all the stuff in red, you really need to remember. Because it's going to be getting important shortly. But to the audience, you just say, Bernie, clear into your mind in red. So we've now got Bernie who's remembered this script. While she's doing that, we know she's got the green card. So we'll casually place these anywhere near the bottom so that the face isn't showing in the pile. And we know that our top three cards are red, yellow, green with the one word on. The one word that relates to the script that's on there. Because I know she's got the green one, I casually, as I'm talking, because I'm not a magician, perception-wise, so you don't have to do any fancy hiding. You blatantly just take the green one, or the red, or the yellow, whichever colour matches what uh, you know your volunteers pick, and put it on top. 
You go up to them and you say, you don't need that anymore. And you take it away as though you're not looking at it, but making sure the back's to the audience. And what you're blatantly doing, this is the opposite side, is you put it down on the pile, but as you do, you're putting it on top of the other green card and keeping your finger in there. And I casually walk away, at which point I turn over both cards together and you see what the one word is. So that concretes in your mind even more that that was a card with just one word on it. So now you as the audience are convinced, how the fuck's this gone on? But underneath it is that one. So you turn them over together and the beauty of it is, you know, it doesn't matter if they move a little bit because they're both green. People aren't looking at it, they're not trying to think you're doing a magic trick. You can't be sloppy about it. In fact, being sloppy about it and blatant, people don't think you're doing anything there. If you were to try and do it magician slight hand wise, you'd just draw attention to it. So Bernie's now got burnt into a mine, hopefully. Spain, 16 years old, parents, Kate, 14 days, beach, water skiing, pizza, pizza, or Robbie Williams. The fact it's a holiday, who was there, all the information, and you saw Robbie Williams at the airport on the way home. So what have I then done in advance? Well, because I'm a lazy sod, and my memory's crap, uh, you could just remember that from memory yourself, but what I did was, I got the pad in advance, and in the top corner, I wrote very small, 16 years to remind me of the age, I wrote very small people, meaning there are Spain, um, parents, Kate, so all the cues are there on each page for me, I don't even need to bother remembering them. They remind me of the information in the order it's on the car, so then all I've got to do is remember that it's 16, but I've got to look as well, I don't know. Because remember, the audience now are convinced she's just had a card with one word on, and she's conjuring up her own private memory, because that's your private memory card. <coughs> conjure it up yourself, your own private memory. It sounds like you're saying conjure up something of your own. What you're saying is burn it in red, if you're telling them to read this script. So we wouldn't go suddenly, oh, the 16. Because remember, Bernie, now we look at what's going on in Bernie's head here. She's read all that. She knows to burn into her mind the red stuff. Okay. As far as she's concerned, all of those cards have probably got, as far as she's concerned, different scripts on like that. So from Bernie's perception, the, the, the mind-reading miracle that's going on here is not that I'm telling her Spain, 16 years old parents, and all this, but she knows that if I knew which card she took, that I'd know that's what it said. It's hopefully that I've given the impression that I don't know what card she took, so therefore it's a bit impressive that I'm getting the information right. But the audience are perceiving it as fucking out one word of memory. So there is a, something impressive going on for both parties, and that's why if they talk afterwards, if I had left you in Nishritam after the break, um, you'd have gone up and said, well, what do you remember? And even if, even if Bernie had started going on about, well, I could see these words in red, you'd be going, well, yeah, he told you to burn it in your mind in red and memory. And it convinced you even more that what you saw was real. And you telling her what went on would make her doubt what went on. So actually, that's why it's called dual reality, because you've both got a different reality of what's going on. And we go through it. So obviously we don't say all oh, 16. In fact, I don't say it out loud. I write it first, so you all know. And then it looks miraculous, like I've been picked up. How old were you in this memory that you've conjured up, which is emphasizing? Again, you've conjured it up, you've created it. It gives this idea it's definitely imaginary. How old were you? Oh. And we've already, when she says 16, it's already there, so it's like, wow. She also doesn't know, because I haven't said it out loud, that this is going on. She doesn't know what I've wrote on the pad. She doesn't know that I'm presenting it to you guys and girls as well reading her mind through hypnosis. As far as she's concerned, she's just remembering what she can. She might perceive it's just a case of trying to remember as much as possible rapidly, speed reading under hypnosis. It doesn't matter what she perceives. The fact is, her reality will still be impressive, but for a different reason than what you guys and girls find it to be. Uh, as I said, you know, these things sometimes, but Bernie obviously didn't remember Pisa and Pisa, but she remembered everything else on there in red. Some of the things the people might not remember, but fine. 
If that happened, you just do what I didn't, can you? There's law, well, oh, so you can't remember where you went the last night, can you not? To the audience, that just sounds like I'm saying, you know, in this memory at the minute, you can't, you can't remember where you were at last night on your holiday. Fine, you'll do something else. <clears throat> well, this is to remind the person. What I'm really saying, you decided is, are you sure you can't remember what it said on the card about where you were on your last night of your holiday? But to the audience, I'm just going to let, so you can't remember, can you not, where you were on your last night? That's fine, we'll move on. Well, that might just be enough to remind them, oh yeah, it was on the card, he's up. To, 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 you know, take it forward that um, next bit. And you can string that along as long as you want with a bit of thought. Uh, it's the phraseology that does it, you know. Were you on your own? We've already booked no. And as it goes on, we, you know, were parents there? Yes. Hmm, were parents? Now I'm thinking that probably, I mean, I know full well what's on here. But I'm going to make it look, I'm thinking you probably, how old are you, 16? I'm thinking you wouldn't just go with your parents at the age of 16. Have you got a friend with you? Yeah. What's she called? Kate. Well, we're already... So it looks impressive. Now, the age, 16, that's slightly cudged up. Well, hey, you know, these things um, work to varying and lesser degrees. And that also helps if you get up early enough in the morning and don't get pissed the night before. But well, what you need is two marker pens, two, that being one more than the one I've currently got, both of the same colour. Somewhere in here, there is another one. And the key about this is, the one that you have here should be one that doesn't work. Unfortunately, this is still working. <laughs> but it shouldn't work. Because beforehand, okay, beforehand, because I know the number 16, I've... Uh, a bit of a mess. Right, and then we'll put one in there, uh, and we'll kind of put that in, uh, and we'll put a few more lines like that, and I'll just a few. So that could be cast off after the... So the pen doesn't work. The pad's short, so you don't see that. And even when I open it, all you see is blank paper, because when it comes to doing it, I open it from the back and give them the bit that this is already written on, facing them. You give them the pen tool, and they're moving it around, but it's dried out. You make sure it's dried out, not the one that you set it up with yourself. It's dried out. So they're moving it around, and the audience perceive they're writing and scribbling. Automatic writing, so-called. But it doesn't matter what they do, nothing's going to end up on that paper, but afterwards it'll look a curious mess, because that's the way you made it beforehand. Um, and then you can conveniently go, don't you think, you don't say, do you think that's 16? You go, don't you think that could be a, um, yeah? Don't you think that's it? I think that could be. And don't you think that could be? Yeah. And everyone goes, yeah. Because again, we don't want Bernie when we wrote this down because that's so lot of you. It's on the count. Although it is slightly impressive if they go and talk afterwards. If you you use people's have different areas of the other. Because Lisa doesn't know the pen doesn't work. As far as Lisa would have been concerned. But did you see what I was actually drawing on that paper? Yeah. I was drawing 16 on that before. Well, yeah, you, you, well, yeah. You, you finished it off just at the last minute, but you did actually put 16 up there, which was a bit curious, because that was my 16, uh, bigger. Uh, there you go, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking coincidence for you. But you know, you can't rely on that happening every uh, event. Um, so we stick with, with that, that's just fucking freaky, frankly. Um, but, to be on the safe side, the pen doesn't work. So the person, as far as they're concerned, Think whatever they think they're doing. It doesn't matter. The point is, nothing's going on there. So then when you do that, the audience go, oh yeah, I can see it. Yeah, all right, we scribbled that. So afterwards, when everyone's talking, they'll say, you know, you went into the and scribbling the pen, you wrote number 16. It was really weird because afterwards the other person said 16. He's like, how did you do it? And they won't have a clue how they did it because they don't know. They're not going to think for a minute you give them a pen that didn't work and already had it wrote down. Neither for the audience. Right? It could just as easily be a number, it could be a letter of the alphabet. The point is, it's already on there, with some scribbles as well, and the pen you give them doesn't work. Uh, but those two elements together, and then it becomes a routine. So you've took one or two different techniques there, forcing the card, although we're doing it very sloppily, literally just take the top three. They're all false cards. Um, what they call in magic a double lift, when you take back the memory card off and you put it back on top of the colour book to turn it over both together. Imagine that would be called a double lift. 
this. They call the pen that doesn't work. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and collectively, it's all a crock of bullshit, but impressive. Um, that you can, with a little bit of thought and creativity, use for group sessions. And you know, if you, it depends how deep you are, but you know, this automatic writing plan with the pen that doesn't work. Anyone that was at Barry's hypnosensory uh, therapy seminar, you saw the way Barry was using props. I'm sure with a little thought and imagination, you can think of ways of waking your client up, showing them a blank pad. You don't say, oh, it's a blank pad, because that's like a suggestion that there's something special about the pad. You just casually display it, because then people perceive that it's blank. And you give them the pen. Now, they're not going to think for one minute you're going to give them a pen that doesn't work. Then you go, and sleep, or mid trance, and turn the pad up to where you've already written whatever. I let them do a bit of scribbling while they're in trance, go and have a cigarette outside. Then come back in and conveniently, they will find on there some positive word that you can then talk about for the next 20 minutes about, well, that's come out of your subconscious and that'll get them talking. But think about it, you know, it might be a trick here, but this can also be used in therapy if you think about it. All right, a bit devious, a bit straight, but you could use that in therapy as, to get them talking. Um, you know, it's only got to be a curious word that looks scribbled, like when you bring them back round. I think that looks like a C to me. Um, I mean, I can oh, speak that and all that sort of. You might have beforehand. You know the person's coming with a fear of, I don't know, spiders, right? That's uh, Now, you could just go ahead and do your trance induction and then get them to visualise the spider with bully boots on big clown head and nose and all this and do a swish pattern, swash pattern, call it what the fuck you will, basically tell them they're not scared of spiders anymore. Because if they pay the money and they believe that you're a hypnotist and they've become hypnotised, then they won't be scared of spiders anymore because it's all a big fucking placebo effect. But if you want to trick them along um, this line, then you could perhaps write down, uh, scribble, try and do it with your eyes closed a bit, but I could feel that as almost being crowned there, and that just went line and pupils around, fucking bollocks, whatever. So when you bring them back into the room and take the pen off them, which, if you're conveniently on your desk, got a matching one, I'll use a different colour for illustration purposes, it's got nothing to do with the fact I've lost the other one, you understand. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to You'd have the other one there that does work, and as you bring them round, you can blatantly put that in that pocket, and casually, when you then come to look at the pad, you go, oh, can we just see what you've scribbled? They're concentrating on the pad, they don't remember you put the pen in that pocket, and then you just bring out the one that works, out of this pocket, which they'll remember as being the same pen. So they're convinced they bloody drew this themselves. And then you can go, look, obviously it's going to be a different colour now, you go, I think your subconscious is saying here, I'd say that might be a C, do you think that could be a C? And they'll go, yeah, okay, we'll go. Then that could be an L, that could be an O. I don't know what that looks like. You know what, I think that's I think that's saying clown. I think your subconscious has given us the answer here. You wouldn't be scared of spiders, would you anymore, if they all look like clowns with funny boots and all that? And they go, oh, no, obviously. Well, let's use what your subconscious has told us all work then. Well, yeah, that'd be a good idea, because it's really weird. I don't understand how I brought that down. Put them back over and tell them that's what's going to happen. And you've compounded the suggestion like a million times, because they believe it's something that's come from their deep, dark, subconscious mind, telling them that's the solution. No, it was a pen that didn't work, and you'd already wrote it down in advance. Now with, a bit, <laughs> now, with a bit of thought, if I was a complete twat, and I won't mention names, well, you know, with a bit of thought, I could do a full fucking two-day training course on using a pen that doesn't work, and switching it, and having people write things down, give it a fancy name, and charge it two and a half grand to become a master practitioner type thing, allegedly if you get what I'm saying. Um, but you know, I'm sure you're all intelligent enough to work out for yourself that you could put different words down, it could be numbers, and it's obviously going to be relevant to what you know there probably is. Um, right, how long have we got till the break? We've got 20 minutes, so let's try some out. Um, is there any questions on that particular technique and those bits there before we move on? Yeah. We're not going to be yeah. repeating this stuff. How come she doesn't remember reading the card? Right, one of two things can happen. If the person perceives, well, one of three things can happen. If the person here, who you force the card on, that the audience thinks one word, but it's really the script. If they perceive that you've hypnotised them, so come to the belief they've been hypnotised, 
which will cover inductions over the weekend, but if they come to believe that, then they will also come to believe that whatever you suggest to them will happen. It's a logical train of thought, if they believe they've been hypnotized. So that's why we use that phrase, you remember to forget, and forget to remember everything that's just taken place. There's a post-hypnotic, if the person's hypnotized. And if they're not hypnotized, it's a nice way of saying, look, whatever you do, don't tell anyone what's just gone on. Remember to forget, forget to remember. It's got a dual meaning. Um, so they might forget, or think they've forgotten, or they might remember and go off afterwards and say, they've been off staring at this card and stuff in red was coming up with this word, this word, that word. Well, yeah, the audience law thinking, well, that's what he told you to do. So you end up confusing each other, it's dual reality, because different things went on for both of the audience. And you. You end up confusing the issue so that everyone's more convinced that it really did take place. Um, any more questions on that before we... Yeah? So if I spoke to her and said, what did you do on your holiday, would she then conjure up a false memory of her being in Spain when she was 16? Or she might if say, what did you She might, um, at the back of the room, afterwards. Fine. But what's your conclusion then going to be? Right. That's why I didn't say I want you to remember Something that's definitely taken place. I wasn't blatant like that. I said, I want you to burn green red in your mind. Conjure up an image in your mind. Gives the impression of creating. People presume it's real. But if that conversation did take place afterwards, people would just come to a conclusion where she made it up. Which, if anything, is actually reinforcing the fact I couldn't have done it. Um, any, any more on that before we move on? Cool. Ah, oh, that was my Sorry, Mike. Um, right, uh, with a bit of thought, you've got an entire new therapy there, as well as, uh, you know, oh, you need a few pads, a few pens, a bit of thought, a few different sets of cars, because you could have five people on stage, and one force holiday on, somebody else force somebody else. You could, do, you could do a fucking hour with that, there's an entire show there. There's a career. Think about it, I'm telling you, you can make a shitload of money. You might even get your own TV series, hey? Um, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> right. So, um, maybe even right along. Um, yeah, okay. So the message we're trying to get across is what you say isn't always what it appears to be. Uh, it's whatever your reality is doesn't necessarily match the other person's reality. And that's the same in therapy. Never prejudge, forget, you know, courses that say, you know, when this happens, that is the guaranteed way of treating that person. Always. Everyone's different. We're all individuals, we're human beings. There's commonalities amongst us, yes. We all piss and shit the same way. Some people, it smells. Some, it doesn't. So we're similar but different. So don't prejudge your clients. Work into their reality, because their reality will generally be different than yours. Be aware of that. Don't, and all this crap about rapport gets you onto the person's own reality. You can't possibly get into their reality. I don't care what magic NLP technique or calling what you, you will. You can't. Because you weren't there, you're not that person, you've not experienced it. And the prime example of that is like eight or nine people see a road traffic accident, all at the same time, stood on the same side of the road in a group. The police take statements of them all separately. They all say different things, but they all saw the same thing. There's a very valuable lesson there about perception uh, stuff. Right, what we've got here, we're going to move on a bit. We've got some uh, cards, playing cards. It's another nice cheap one you can make up. Um, again, if this was television, we'd do this bit and then start filming after you've selected a card. But well, what we've got written on here are some words on the back of the cards, like Dave, what's that, Jack of Spades, Rose, Nine of Spades, Golf, Seven of Diamonds, Lily, Five of Spades, Cork, Ace of Diamonds, Sarah, Five of Clubs, Tennis, Ace of, I can, I'm not going to stand here and go through all 52, we'll be here all fucking day. I can tell you, Lord, you may have noticed some of them have got names on, people's names. Some have got names of flowers or trees or plants on. Some have got sports, some have got names of drinks, alcoholic and non-alcoholic. 
is so we can randomly generate, this is the way we put it across, randomly generate an idea in your mind, a word. So, what I would like, very quickly, if we could, is one, two, I'm not going to pick on you, but I need four people to come and sit on these chairs, uh, like, just about right now. Thank you, you see, it doesn't work. Three, three, plus one is four. Come on, Julie, just, uh, yeah. Give them a round of applause, come on, at least they're out in the box now. You're all well before the weekend's out, I can assure you, whether you like it or not. Um, and remember, as the weekend goes on, we start doing things like breaking glass bottles over people's heads, as pay control demonstration. So you volunteer earlier on, and you avoid that. Okay, um, right. Now, yeah, they've all got different words on. So basically, all I want you to do, do um, what, what would you prefer? Diamonds, clubs, hearts, or spades? Hearts. Free choice. Whatever they say is what we're going to be allowed to have. I'm not going to do any of this. We'll get rid of clubs until we arrive at some. I'm not going to force it on them. It's what they want, is what we'll have. So you want hearts, okay? Which heart card? Jack of hearts. Yeah, free choice, yeah? We've not set anything up, have we? Okay, take the jack of hearts. Don't let me see what's on the back of it. In fact, for now, keep it against your chest. Well, that's going to be your word. Uh, you can, hearts, we've already got. So diamonds, clubs, or spades? Clubs. Clubs. Which club would you like? Seven. Seven of clubs. Um, Right, yeah, brilliant. Just take that. That's going to be your word. Don't let me see it. So we've got clubs, we've got hearts, uh, ladies first, diamonds and spades. Uh, yeah, you've got clubs, yeah? That, so diamonds, which number? Three. Three diamonds, okay. Uh, that's going to be your word. Don't let me see it. And, spades. yeah. Good man! <laughs> Thank you there. What, which one would you like? Why is it that cute? Which spade would you like? Yeah? Okay, that's going to be your word. Look at it, burn it into your mind. Um, I know for a fact you haven't got Dave, Rose, Golf, Lily, Coke, or Sarah. None of you. At least you shouldn't, unless I cocked up and I was writing the cards and trying to make them all different. If you just confirm none of you have got Dave, Rose, Golf, Lily, Coke, or anything like that. Good. Hopefully I haven't wrote them. Um, I was pissed when I wrote them. No surprise there, people. Um, but I want you to. Uh, Concentrate on your word, okay? Concentrate on your words. Okay, if you would, that's brilliant. And then, literally behind my back, it's, everyone can see, but face down, put your card back in the cards. Good, I just want you to burn into your mind the word you've now got in your mind, yeah? <coughs> Somebody else left, yeah? And um, as everyone can see, you'll confirm, yeah, your cards are in there. You get rid of them, because I don't want to look at them. Stick with the word you've now got. This is when, if it was television, we'd start filming. Okay, because then it would look even more impressive, because you wouldn't know about that. So, we're going to start with... Start with the ladies, then we can... We can, uh, we can send... send um, your heart, yeah? Diamonds, I think. Diamonds. Okay. Think of the word. Okay. Now, if I was a certain person, I'd say I want you to look at me and spell it out. Letter for letter in your <laughs> mind. Because I'm going to read your eyes and tell you what this is. Uh, now, I think there's an O in it. The letter O, yeah? Yeah. Uh, this is near the beginning, yeah? Um, getting a G as well. Mm -hmm. Not near the end. Okay, let's go. Um, There's a sport as well, so it's boxing, B-O-X-I-N-G. Yes. Is that right? The round of applause goes back to the seat. Number one successful. Number one successful. Right. <laughs> Think of your word. Spell it. Count how many letters there is, actually, that helps. Believe it or not, you do have you, you are perceptively going enough that I can tell that it's got five letters. Yeah? Five letters. Cool. Doesn't actually have me know what they are, but it's got five letters. Bells are always good start, aren't they? E? Yeah. Really? You said that rather too quickly, so I reckon there's more than one E in it, is there? Right, this is probably going to be a name. Peter, P-E-T-E-R. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Round of applause for this lady, she goes back.
Both think of your words, made them big, made them bright. Um, <coughs> tree. Give him a round of applause if he goes back. Brilliant. 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 Thank you. Right, lastly. Ah, look, just, if you just look at me, sir. My God, you're attractive. You find me beautiful. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just thinking you were, okay? And we're going to try and pick that up from you. Might sound, well, not like that, because that's just fingers, but you know, with mine. Um, <laughs> letter A. There are letter A in this word. Count the number of letters in your mind. Five? No, not five. You're right, count them again. Six. six. You're looking at six. Okay, six, right. Ooh, I'm getting a good feeling about this. Uh, yeah, what well, is Bra Brandy. Yeah. Brandy, give her a round of applause. <laughs> now, again. I think you'll agree that's as close as you can get to apparent, genuine-looking mind reading. It's impressive to the people up here, it's impressive to the audience. Uh, how was it done? Well, very quickly before the break, because this one only takes five minutes to explain. <laughs> hey! Oh, this is fucking tremendous. What you do is you're going to buy yourself two decks of cards. Okay. Um, you take 15 cards from one of the decks and just put them to the side for the minute. You take then a full deck. Diamonds, clubs, hearts, and spades. And so it speeds the, uh, I was going to say, trick, experiment in the power of the mind with hypnosis. Um, we bought them in suit order, so it's easy to get to club, spades, hearts. What we've done is, on the back of every spade card, ace to king, we've written tree. Okay? On the back of every heart card, we've written Peter. On the back of every diamonds card, we've written written boxing, and on the back of every club card, we've written branding. So basically, we've got all the spades saying tree, all the diamonds saying boxing, all the hearts saying Peter, club saying brandy, and because I'm a lazy son and couldn't be bothered remembering, I had a cue sheet on the table, that's why I kept going to look at it to remember what the bloody words were. <laughs> you say, you, you want to crush your mind, but you know, it can be as simple as that. Then, you take... Your other 15 cards and write random words on them. All you need to do is remember what the last one is so you know when you get to it, so you don't pull it off and give away one of the words you're going to force. Random words, which are what you show the audience. You've got names, you know, we've got uh, names here, we've got sports, we've got flowers. And, and the moment you see football, I mean, you're just, you're just doing this casually, you'd stop, or maybe a bit before it. Close them up and turn them over. As far as everyone's concerned, you've got a deck of 52 cards. People can't count them from the audience. It looks like 52, even here. Especially because they've seen you just take them out of the box. And here's a curious thing. As long as you buy the cheap playing cards that you get in pound shops, plastic coated, you can actually fit the full deck and another 15 cards in <laughs> one box. So everyone... It's convinced, without you saying anything, that there's just one deck of 52 cards here. Um, and, you know, then one person picks a club, a spade, a heart, a diamond. It all looks very random. The rest is purely presentation. I get them to put them back behind me back, because that's emphasising in a non-verbal manner that I haven't seen them. It doesn't fucking matter. I know the club's person is thinking of branding. Then it's all down to bullshit and presentation. And you'll notice at the end, I got it wrong. I did that on purpose. Because I knew full well it was brandy, and it's got six letters, but I'm apparently looking at the eyes, moving, wanted five letters. Dead confident, five letters, and then he goes, no. 
And the audience love to see you fail, so they're secretly thinking, well, bastard. <laughs> <laughs> As is human nature. And then you go, no, do it again. Well, no, it isn't six, six, see, I missed you last time. And you suddenly put blame on that. And then you go, hey, hey, it's Brandy. And they go, yeah, round of applause each time. Natural end to it. If you were doing that for TV, you start filming once the cards are being given back and are out of the way. And you just phrase, you wouldn't mention the cards, you just go, now you've got, have you got a word in your mind? Good. We've not set anything up, have we? Well, no, you haven't. We've not prearranged anything. This was a free choice of word, wasn't it? We're all answered questions that we'll answer honestly to, that make it look like they've just thought of a word, which for televisual purposes makes you look even more bloody impressive. And on that note, we're having a half hour brew break, smoking, wanking, everything's permissible. <laughs> We're consenting adults. And we shall be starting prompt at 12.30. We'll then go through for an hour to half one when you can all stuff your faces through there with the gorgeous food. We're going to carry on on this theme for till lunchtime. Then this afternoon we're going to go on to therapy for kids, uh, a few approaches for therapy for your stuff and group sessions. And tomorrow we're going to go into like inductions, but stuff that isn't on the DVDs. We're going to try as much as possible not to repeat anything. So thank you for your kind attention. I'll see you in 30 minutes time. Walkie talkie. Uh, welcome back. Hopefully during the uh, break there you've all had a chance to introduce yourselves to each other. Um, Hopefully, if not, lunchtime. Um, I will say at lunchtime, the food's in there, by the way. And I will be going across the road to Paul. This is not because I'm avoiding everyone. Uh, you are welcome, when you've had something to eat, to come across the road to the pub and join me. It's not, I'm not doing a, uh, I won't mention names, I'm not, but I'm not doing a despair night. You're welcome to come and join me. Okay, let's plod on because I've got loads of stuff to do. I want to get through the rest of this Darren Brown style material so that then this afternoon after lunch we can move on to <coughs> more conventional, uh, well, more conventional hypnosis, more, 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 more conventional bullshit, uh, especially stuff to do with kids and stuff. So um, I need, um, there's a prediction there, by the way. I put that up there um, while you roll out. There is a prediction in there. I might now totally ignore it if what I'm hoping to happen doesn't happen. I'll just forget about the prediction. Uh, what we need, okay, four volunteers. Um, so, come on, people who've not been up yet, give them a round of applause. Go ahead, back in a minute. Go and sit down now. I'd like you, my darling, to go over to the uh, clipboard over there. Well, flip chart stand. Stand there, near the envelope, so I can't get to it. We're going to say ladies first, so um, we'll go in order. My darling, there's four chairs behind you. I'd like you to sit in any chair you want. Whatever feels right for you. You see, I know he doesn't work. Whatever feels right for you. No, 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 seriously, a free choice. Just say, do you want to change your mind or do you want to move around? Do you want to stay where you are? Free choice, yeah? Got five seconds to make your mind. I want to, you, you want to stay like that, yeah? We've not set anything up, have we? Okay. Why did you feel the need to sit in chair number one? Nearest. Nearest. Why did you sit in chair three? It was just nearest, it was just there. Right. Fuck you. Right, okay, well, final time, do you want to change your mind or do you want to stay where you are? Okay, I think that's really fair, isn't it? Would you open up the uh, envelope for us, please? Just take it, read something now, stick it there, just rip it down. Open up the envelope, prediction. If you will, please, take out what is inside. <coughs> Nothing prearranged, just random human nature. Just the way people decided to sit. Yeah, could you open it up and uh, read out loudly what he says? Chair number two will be left empty. Chair number three will be left empty. The first time I saw that, I too was so amazed I forgot to applaud. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 don't, don't stop. <laughs> Was that a round of applause or somebody put the chips in? But no, you did have a free choice there, yeah? And you could have changed your mind. So, right, how did we do it? Well, I'll tell you that in a minute. You can down, take a seat, my darling. We'll do a couple in a row and then we'll explain after how we do it. Because they're all done in a similar way. So it's just a new technique we'll be teaching you. 
Uh, I want you to notice here that these cards have got just a crappy back design on because quite frankly I cut them out of card and wrote them out in my lovely handwriting. <laughs> but you will notice it just says think of the colour. Okay? And then we have the next one, think of shape. Then we've got think of a letter. And we've got think of a letter, think of a number. Okay, four of them. I'm not even going to hold these, so if you take them, keep them face down. Give them a mix up, that'll be grand. And then randomly keep, keep, well, keep them towards yourself, towards your chest, or let me see which one you're getting. Randomly give um, the, the, the other three volunteers one of those cards. So you've each got a card each. Now, this isn't rocket science. I know one of you will have the number card. One of you will have the letter card, one of you will have the shape card, and one of you will have the colour card. I hope, otherwise something really freaky is going on here. Okay. So whatever you've got on your card, burn it into your mind right now. Burn it into your mind and visualise it. We're going to try and pick up on this through body language, winky winky. It can be a demonstration of body language, but whatever you want it to be, it's just the way you present it. Um, We've got to Marion. Um, think of what's on your card. I think you're thinking of red, the colour red. Is it? You're thinking of the colour red? Was it actually red you were thinking of? Mm. Nice one! Give her a round of applause. That's brilliant. Can't say that. Super. Okay. Um, right. Who, 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 who are we going to go to now? I don't know. We'll go to Jackie. Think what you've got in your mind, try and project it forward, all that kind of thing. Um, you're thinking of a letter Q? Is that right? Yeah. Nice one, give it a round of applause, brilliant. Um, yeah, we've got that one now. Two left to go. Um, hmm. Focus, think of your. your, your yeah, you're drawing in your mind. You've got the heart shape. Is that right? Thank you. Round of applause. Another one there, right? So that means you must have the number six in your mind. You've got the number six in your mind. Give them a round of applause on that. Bloody hell. <coughs> How did we do that? Why did we do that? Right, we shall explain. Give them a round of applause as we go back to the seat. Okay, okay. First thing, we'll start off with the chair. Um, now, you'll probably guess how this is done if we just get three more people around them at the front. If you'd like to hold, please. And just sit anywhere you want, but make sure it's different than what happened last time. Okay. The key here is the predictions on view at the beginning, which says chair number two will be left empty. And this is on the CD ROM, all these, all the things, they're all there for you to print out, so you see down room what I did. Chair number two will be empty, so how can we make sure chair number two is empty? <coughs> well, the way we do it is quite simply this. If this had occurred, I would have said, would everyone please stand up where you are, okay? And could you turn round and turn round the chair that you sat on? Just turn it round so everyone can see the front. And I would show that chair number two was the one left empty, you see. Um, now, because I made sure that this one over here has got the number two on it. So if this one's left empty, turn the chairs around, number two. Okay, put your chairs back in position. I want you to sit so you're all three over this side, so it left me with that one empty. If that had happened, I would have said, everyone, stand up and just tilt your chair back like that. <laughs> and chair number two would have been left empty, you see? Because nobody knows what's going on until you get to the prediction. And then, if you stand up again, if you'd like to sit here, you two there. If that happened, I would say, why did you feel the need to sit in chair number one? Which is established, I've started counting this way, which means chair number two is empty. Same thing again. If that was left empty, I'd go, why did you feel the need to sit in chair number one? Which means number two is empty. Always round, your prediction is correct. 
And the old black and vertical mind made it, and it's a pace of pace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You can go around. Thank you. Good stuff. Um, all right. And all the numbers and all that for your shares, they're all on CD run. Everything is. It's all idiot proof. You'll get all that. Right. The next bit. It's a slight variation on what we were doing before about dual reality. Only very slight. But what the cards really say is think of a colour, think of a letter Q, think of a heart shape, and think of a number six. However, we start off with that one at the front. So when I hold it like that, and the reason for that is I'm going to be using my fingers in a minute to cover up bits. Well, sure, we've got to think of a colour. And then turn it to myself and bring that one to the front. Put my fingers over the letter Q and show the audience it says, think of a letter. So they don't know it actually says letter Q. As far as they're concerned, it just says, think of a letter. Same thing again. This time we've got my finger over that. So they say, think of a shape. They don't know it actually says, think of a heart shape. And lastly, think of a number. They don't know you're covering the number six. You give them to one of the people who genuinely mixes them. That's why this daft, spazzy, bad design. Okay. That one, diagonally, that direction, has got the thickest line, which on my memory page sheet tells me it's the heart shape, which, sure enough, it is. So the moment I see the line like that, I know that person's got that shape card. The line upwards, it tells me it's the colour card. But it doesn't say any colour on there, but most people think of red. That's why we start on that, that's an important point in a minute. Think of a letter Q, straight line, letter Q, and the one that's the other direction, which either way around is going that direction, is the number. So the mix, that's genuine. But when they've got hold of them, you know who's got what card, just by where the lines are. So you go to person number one, who you know is think of a colour, because you've gone for the line, and you go, think of what you've got in your mind, and you go, it's a red colour, isn't it? Colour red? Now, if it's red, which most people will think of, great, you've got both bits right, colour and red, and it embeds in the audience's mind that the person's randomly thought of their own colour, which will make them think later they thought of their own shape, their own letter, their own number. If you don't get the colour right, you go, well, that was just a warm-up, but it was a colour you were thinking of, wasn't it? You have got the colour card. So you've still got a bit of a, uh, an impressive-looking thing. And then the rest, it just comes down to very quickly going, you don't know you've got the shape, haven't you? It's hard, isn't it? Very quickly going, you hard shape! And they just answer yes or no. But the audience think, bloody hell, not only is he told which person had the card, think of the shape, but he's also realised that they were thinking of a hard, because everyone thinks. They've had a free choice, where really not. Same with the letter, you know, because of the line on the back. You know it's a letter Q, same with the number. And it's as simple <coughs> as that. And again, you know, if you were going to be doing that for television, for example, you would start filming after <laughs> have the cards handed out. Um, and you'd actually take the cards back off them, because you already just remember who had what card. And you start filming. And you go, you're thinking of shape, aren't you? It's, it's, it's a heart, heart shape, yeah. And everyone's like, whoa, 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 give him a TV series. Because um, you, you, you never saw the um, bit, bit, bits of, bits of um, card as it was. OK. We're going to, these next few things are a bit, a bit shy, really. But the, the, I love them because the quality shines. Um, because they're so simple, they're so crap, but they get tremendous reaction from members of the public. And that's remember at the end of the day, your audience, they're members of the public. Now these can be used as mind reading things if you want, or displays of mind control. I'm going to project things to the audience and you're all going to pick up on it. Or it can be as a suggestibility test for a stage hypnosis show, or a group therapy session to show how suggestible the audience are. So we're going to do it that way. What I'd like um, everyone to do is stand up where you are, just stay where you are, everyone stand up, look. And I am going to project one of these colours to you. 
I'll tell you now, I'll give you a clue, it's not green. I'm just going to randomly think of one of these colours and project it all to you right now. Now I want you to honestly, if you were thinking of the colour I'm about to pull out, then you stay stood up. If you weren't, you sit down. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five. Five really suggestible people. That's cool. We'll, we'll try and make it a bit easier. If you stand up, everyone. We're going to project a different one now. Um, okay. If you were thinking of that, stay stood up. If you weren't, sit down. Cool. It's happening the way it should. More of you are getting a bit suggestible. Up you stand. We can only really do this twice more, otherwise it becomes a bit obvious. We're not <laughs> projecting to you for obvious reasons. If you were thinking of that one, stay stood up. Okay. Now over this half of the room. Okay, we can only do this once more. Stand up. And if you were thinking of that one, stay stood up. Three, four, five, six, seven. Thank you. Now, what I've just done there is conveniently killed five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, no. Chucking aside, it doesn't fucking matter. I mean, generally speaking, people generally go red first, yellow, blue green, black in that order, generally speaking. But I didn't even bother doing them in that order because, hey, who gives a shit? Um, the point is, not only does it kill time, but you've got everyone in the audience to stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. So what you're doing, you're conditioning all of them to start doing what you tell them to do. Okay, and you're doing it in a manner where there's no talk of hypnosis. You're already getting them conditioned that if you say stand up, you stand up. If you say sit down, you sit down. The fact that Every time you'll have a greater or lesser number of people, sometimes you'll do it, and every time everyone will stay stood up. Fine! It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if everyone sits down, you just go, oh, we're going to have to be, you make a joke of it, you know, oh, I knew it was going to be hard today, or we'll carefully with pay. It doesn't really fucking matter what happens. They all think, well, that you're just trying to project a course. They, they make of it, the audience make of it, they're doing the show for you, they make of it what they will. As daft as that sounds, that is a damn good. Five minute time killer. And, you know, if, especially in corporate companies, because a lot of them now do this fucking loose. Loose your colour testing. Hey, personality testing. Buy colours to decide if you're right for the job. I wouldn't want to fucking work for a company that decided <laughs> they're out to do my job based on colours, quite frankly. But, you know, if they want to pay people a lot of money for that, that's fine. But, so, you know, in that arena, this will seem familiar territory to them kind of thing. And that's what I was saying before. There is a message going through this, even though it's not necessarily all hypnosis. It is hypnosis. The message, familiarity, people feel more relaxed, you're getting them conditioned uh, to, to, to do things. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, not exactly hypnosis, admittedly, but it's amazing how these skills can be tied in with hypnosis and other mind trickery and persuasion skills that you can learn. That will become more obvious uh, as, as you get to watch some more of the videos that I'm excitedly going to release to you over the next couple of days. As I say, don't go out there searching for the DVD set and buying it. Please don't. That's not a sales ploy. Don't. I want to give you free information. Bear with me on that one. What I would like you to do, though, so I can keep bringing you these videos for free, is pop a comment in the box underneath this video. What you thought about it, what you'd like me to share with you over the next couple of days. Um, what you think you could use this stuff for in your own life, for your own business. Because what we're going to do is, to reward you for taking the few moments to do that, type in the info, what you think down below, uh, we're actually going to allow three of you Three of you, at the end of these next few days, are going to be picked at random, and you're going to win literally 
$5,000, and I mean that, $5,000 of stage hypnosis, hypnotherapy, NLP, mind control, mentalism, seduction, persuasion, you call it what you want. We're going to cover everything there is to know about mind control and psychological trickery in the $5,000 worth of stuff that three of you can win by making a comment below. Oh, and by the way, keep an eye on your inbox because tomorrow I'm going to be revealing to you some secrets of how to change people's lives for the better with NLP and hypnotherapy.